Hey guys, back again, and it is October 16th, the 16th movie, <clears throat> horror movie review, and this is another movie that I didn't watch before reviewing it, And but this is like one of my favorite horror movies, and I've only actually seen it a couple times all the way through, I think, and this movie is Christine, and it is directed by John Carpenter, the director of the original Halloween movie. He's done a lot of great movies, and just the interesting thing that um, I got recommended this movie by somebody in jail that I was in jail with. I might have known about it previously, but I just, I remember that because he was like, two movies you need to check out, it's Christine and Chud, and I've seen both of them, and I love both of them, I don't have Chud, but... Um, you know, he's like, Christine's about a killer car and all this stuff. And it's like, yeah, it does sound really cool. I finally got around to checking it out. And like I said, it's one of my favorites. I don't remember every detail about it. I, I really need to give it a fresh watch. And when I look at the DVD case, it's still in the plastic. So uh, another movie that I'd probably just, I'd like to have on Blu-ray, but I'm just glad that I own it. But um, Basically, yeah, it's about a car that's, like, possessed or something. I don't remember if we ever get fully get the backstory of, of the car, why it is the way it is, but basically, there's this kid that's in, like, high school, and he's kind of like a nerdy kid. You know, I don't know if nerdy is the best word, but I don't think that he's not one of the popular kids. He's not one of the jocks or whatever else, but he wants to get a car. I guess he's at the age of driving or whatever, and he sees this beat-up junker, and he wants it, uh, and the guy sells it to him. He ends up fixing it up and um, find out that, you know, the car is possessed or whatever. It it has, like, an attachment with the owner, and it doesn't want, like, anybody, like, separating the owner from the car or something like that. One of the scenes I remember is at a drive through uh, movie theater, a drive-in, sorry, and uh, he's like on a date with a girl in the new car, and uh, he gets out or whatever, and the car tries to suffocate the girl, um, tries to, it locks the doors, and it turns like, it puts like gas through the vents or whatever. Um, so the car can control itself. It can also get itself back into shape after it's been wrecked. Um, so there's some really cool effects, really cool scenes as far as that goes. The car is awesome. It's like a classic car. I'm not really a car guy. I would suggest this movie to everybody. You know, I think it's a really great movie, even if you're not really into horror movies, even if you're not really into cars or whatever. I don't know. Um, it is kind of probably more of a man's type of movie, but the cool thing to me, though, is that the main character changes. Uh, like, it's, he starts out pretty humble and innocent, and he's the kid that gets picked on and stuff, and John Travolta's in this movie, and he is like a bully, like a greaser, like in the movie Grease. Um, so it's awesome that he's in here. Um, but yeah, he's a bully. <clears throat> so the main character gets bullied and stuff. I don't remember if, he, I think he has a best friend, maybe, too, that's with him in this movie. Um, you see where he's talking to the old guy there, that's the guy that's selling him the car. That's like when he first gets... Christine. He names the car Christine, so that's why the, the movie's named Christine. Uh, but, so yeah, like, the car tries to kill, like, his girlfriend, and, like, when he gets, like, bullied by somebody, like, John Travolta, like, the car tries to kill him. I don't remember if the car actually does kill him or not. I think maybe it does. He goes into an alleyway to get away from the car, and the car basically like crushes itself like through forces itself like through the alleyway to get to him and uh i think he sees that like there's no driver and everything but yeah one of the main things that i love is how the the main character starts out humble and innocent and stuff and throughout time he gets more cocky and he kind of turns like evil and bad himself um he starts wearing like a leather jacket or whatever and you know he usually has glasses i don't maybe he takes the glasses off i don't remember but he becomes kind of like an asshole, and people, like his best friend, like notices the change in him, and so that's a part of the movie, too. Um, let's just go ahead and look at this awesome cover. 
You know, the fire. I don't know if it's just the fire or whatever, but it also kind of makes me think of Carrie, which is another great horror movie that I don't have. But you know how she gets bullied and stuff, and then, you know, she ends up being, like, the crazy one in the end. And I'm not saying that he turns into, like, a killer, but he does get, I mean, he does get pretty crazy, though. Okay, it says, Carpenter's Best Since Halloween by Time Magazine. And, yeah, I don't know if I would... It's really tough, because I almost want to say I'd put it above Halloween, because Halloween's just a slasher. But it is one of the most iconic classic slasher movies. But, I mean, there's so much more to this movie, I think. John Carpenter brings Stephen King's best-selling novel to life in this chilling thriller. So, yeah, that's another thing. This is based on a novel by Stephen King. What a surprise. I think this is the third movie that I've reviewed so far that's based on a novel. I know that The Shining was one and Dreamcatcher was another. I don't know if there were any other ones, but Christine is. Uh, it says she was born in Detroit on an automobile assembly line, but she is no ordinary automobile. Deep within her chassis lives an unholy presence. She is Christine, a red and white 1958 Plymouth Fury whose unique standard equipment includes an evil, indestructible vengeance that will destroy anyone in her way. She seduces 17-year-old Arnie Cunningham, played by Keith Gordon, who becomes consumed with passion for her sleek, rounded, chrome-laden body. She demands his complete and unquestioned devotion, and when outsiders seek to interfere, they become the victims of Christine's horrifying wrath. So that basically says what I said in a lot better way, but an exceptional moment in Carpenter's career, says Video Watchdog. So yeah, um, I don't remember exactly how it ends, but that's fine. I don't have to spoil it anyways, because you definitely need to check this out if you haven't seen it. And I um, can't really see any good pictures there, but here's the car. So I'll just keep this one short, but I love Christine. Like I said, I would think maybe it, it might be like in my top ten, so I feel like I'm making a top ten list here because I said that Nightmare on Elm Street 3 might make it in that. But, uh, you know, maybe I'll have to work on that, but this movie is phenomenal. I love this movie. I definitely need to watch it again. I, I should have watched it before talking about it, but it's been on my mind. And I just hadn't had the time to watch a movie the other night, so I wanted to talk about this. So check it out, guys. God bless.